Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can implement OAuth into your application and is it a better option than normal authentication? So let's start. So for those of you who don't know what OAuth is, OAuth is just a way in which you can authenticate yourself to a website using your uh, or using your accounts on websites such as Facebook and Google. So I'm just going to show you an example. So if I go to dropbox.com, Dropbox uses OAuth and if I go to the sign in section you can see here it shows me a button in which I can log in with Google or with Apple and what it will do it it will contact the Google API and the Google API will give them information about me which is the public information not my password and other important stuff but only the public information like my display name my email my image ID and then Dropbox will use that to create a new account or to log me in if I, if I already have an account. So let's start. So I'm just going to go through how I implemented OAuth in this app. So first of all, if you want to implement OAuth, what you have to do is you have to go to your GitHub account. I'll just show you. What you have to do is if you go to your GitHub, GitHub account, you can go to the settings. In the settings, there will be a tab called developer settings and here OAuth apps. Here I have made a OAuth app for this tutorial, but you can create a new OAuth app and it will give you two, two I think two tokens it will give you. Yeah, as you can see, it gives me a client ID which is public, but it also gives me a client secret. This is uh, this is very important and you shouldn't you know upload this to GitHub and you should be very careful with that. Apart from that, when it asks you to send the authorization callback URL, you have to set the URL of your application. So for example, here I have created a route called yeah, auth slash github slash callback. So you have to set this as your authorization callback URL. Uh, local or fourth on doesn't matter. It will automatically redirect you there. So that's fine. So after you do this, it will give you two keys and you can store them with an .env file. I, I won't show these keys because they are private, uh, but you can, you can um, you can get your keys from github and you can uh, keep store them in the .env file there I also created a .env example I'll just show you later why I did this in which I just have the name which I use uh, for these environment tokens and I have no value in front of them so what I'll show you, I'll just show you so there's a tool called gen env types okay I don't have that installed yeah Okay, I have that installed. So there are tool called Gen N types which will generate uh, TypeScript types for environment variables so that you can get auto completion for that. If you can, if you want to check this out, you can go to npm and uh, read this documentation. But if you use this command, it will create a it will create a env dot dot with the TypeScript declarations for this, and I'll just show you how it will help me. For example, if I have a route call. Uh, I'll, I don't need the request and response I'll just do that and what it will do is if I say uh, let's say I do okay I'll just take in the response so I'll do rest.json okay let's just say message I don't want to uh, show this but what it will do is if I do process dot env you can see it provide me with all the auto completion which normally it doesn't if you use standard uh, uh, environment variable so that's a really nice thing and you can't mess up your environment variable names also for this you have to install a package called dot env slash uh, dash save you can use i use yarn so i'll add it using this command but if you are using npm you can use this command to add it and then you can add this dot env dash save slash config you have to import it like reflect metadata and it will just load all the environment variables inside of your app next what we can do is we i'll just create a user entity i'll just show you what the entity looks like so this is a very simple entity i just have a this is a type graphical entity and also a type form entity so what this does is it will create a entity called user in my database and well i'll just you can see i have fields like id name image URL, and email and github id github id should be there in your entities because this is what we will use to authenticate the users 
okay uh, then i have a basic type of connection i have used the oh i have named my database as oauth search to remember and and this will connect to my database and then i'll run the any pending migrations if i have so for setting the user inside of the session i am using redis i'm using redis because it has sub millisecond read writes to the uh, cache and it's a really nice it's a really nice option if you want to get set up quickly and to manage redis i am using express session yeah as you can see i'm using express set, express session and uh, you can create your own session configuration like this so this name i have set it in my constant so it's easier to change it if i have to change it then you can create a redis store like this and then you can set the configuration for a cookie so i have set my cookie to last for 10 years i know it's a little bit too long but you can change it as per as per the requirements and then uh, i have set it secure to prod so that it will only work in https only when i'm in production and this is also a constant variable where i just check if the node environment is equal to production then i have created a new apollo server uh, this i just built so i uh, just to check uh, whether i can use graphql with this and it works so you can just create this simple uh, graphql server and let's just see if i have any mutations yeah so i think i have a mutation and i'll just show you if this works i haven't checked this resolver as of now but i'll just show you and then you can apply the middleware uh, this will only be necessary if you are using a front end to make requests but i never use apollo servers in built cores i always use a uh, package core cores and i set my origin and credentials there next so this is the main part this is where i create a new github strategy with the callback which i put in the github settings and the github client id and the client secret which i got from github then after this function is run what it will do is it will give us a new profile what this profile does is it create it contains the user which github provides us back after it has completed the authentication and what we are doing is we are just seeing if the user exists in our database if the user exists in our database we'll just up, uh, you know update the name field the image field and the other necessary fields for example if a person uh, if a person has a display name of Bob and then he updates his name to Sally, we get updated to the new name which is Sally and so it gets updated throughout the application and, and that's a nice user experience. Or if the data if the user doesn't, doesn't exist in a database, what we can do is we can create a new user with the fields we just used to update the name here. And then we can use this callback. So what this callback does is this will call this function which we specified i think here no yeah this will call this function the auth github callback which is the function where we get the user and then we can do lots of stuff with it and once a user goes to this route then we do this passport dot authenticate with github which will run this whole function so after we go to this uh, route it will run this function and we don't want passport sessions we want our own redis sessions so that's why we are setting session to false here now when we get to auth slash github slash callback we will contain the user and the error so i have just uh, displaying the error message if there is an error and i'll check if the user exists so if the user exists i'll get the id from the user and set it inside of my session and then i'll just return the uh, user and i will call this function with rec and res which is the request and the response is provided to us through this callback and this is just a route I made to test in which what I do is I just get the user from the database and if it exists I'll show it and if it doesn't I'll just show a message okay so let's just show you how it works I have set up wait I have set up two scripts a uh, watch script which just compiles my code and the dev script which runs the server as you can see the server is running on localhost 4000 I'll just quickly go there and I'll go to slash auth slash github because i have set that as the route here slash or slash github i press enter usually this would take you to github to authenticate but as i have already done that it will it won't take me there and it will just redirect me to my website and as you can see we get the user with all the appropriate fields and as you can see this is coming from a database 
as you can see this is running a sql select query and we are getting the user from the database and let's just see if it sets a qid in our cache as you can see the cookie is being set which gives us the user if we move, move on to another route or in the front end as you can see if i go to a different route it gets the user from the cookie and it returns the user so this is how you can implement OAuth into your session oh yeah and one more thing i'll just go to the graphql playground and see if that's working too i hope it is working because you know if it doesn't then there's really no point because we are doing this for graphql and remember to set your request dot credentials to include otherwise the cookies won't work so we'll not log in we'll just get the user i use it in the i store it in a me query i get the image url and i think we should also get the name because yeah we should be getting the name i'll just yeah so we have the name and if i uh, run this query as you can see we get the name and the image url so this is how you can implement oauth into your graphql APIs. if you like this video please like share and subscribe also you can check out the source code here at this url i'll leave it in the description below bye